Former aviation minister Femi Fanikai, Femi, Femi yeah, Fanikai, yeah. um, a few years ago said, "Oh, he was once in a relationship with uh, Bianca, Bianca Ujuku, Ujuku, yes. and you supported him." You I supported him because I was there. They, yeah, so they were lovers. I was, th I was there. Let me tell you something, Jola. This is a great question. During the time FFK was in London, we we're all teenagers. FFK would be one of the oldest one, nineteen. We were like seventeen, sixteen. In London, in those days, we had a group of people. You know, um, the Awolawas, mm -hmm. Oyejiras, those are all Awolawas' grandchildren, or Shimbaju, or maybe um, Dolakpo Shoyode. Mm -hmm. Dolakpo Shoyode is Dolakpo Shimbaju now. Mm -hmm. Dolakpo Funke Awolawa, Yewande Oyejira, Kemi Oyejira, Bukola Saraki, Bimi Saraki, the Falawi Yos, Kemi Adenira. Every one of us were in London at the very same time. If you're going to a club on Saturday night, string fellows, everybody was there. Everybody knew who everybody was dating. Fanikaide was dating Bianca. Fanikaide was in Cambridge. I've seen Bianca in Fanikaide's room many times, loved up and everything. <laughs> they went out. So when this thing happened, Femi called me. I said, what's going on? I'm reading all this stuff. Femi said, could I testify to the truth that he has a bunch of journalists calling me? I said, who are these journalists? I just arrived from Canada, deported, don't have a job. And I was just talking about, you want me to see all this? Thing? Are you sure? He said, yes. Femi needed somebody to defend him. Mm. Because if you really look at it, Femi couldn't do it. She just finished at the Senate. Bukola was a governor. Everybody was in, his, it was in some kind of position that it would be like a scandal. I even called Shegun Cole. He was my boyfriend. I said, Shegun, <laughs> FFK and Bianca. <laughs> Shegun said his wife would be mad if he gets involved. Everybody didn't want to get involved. But I stood up for Femi. I have a name to... I have a name and a reputation too, but one of my things by now, Jola, you should know that I stand up for the truth. Okay, when the guns were boiling in Canada, I stood up for the truth about guns in Canada. So I said, okay, I'll talk to them. So I released a statement to all the newspapers. It's true, they went out and she got pregnant twice. Everybody knows that. By, by Fanny Coyote. The first pregnancy was a miscarriage. The second pregnancy, they were already engaged to get married. Bianca's father was Governor Honor. Governor Honor, O-N-O-H. I think his, her father was an Anambra, I think it's an Anambra state. Her father was a governor. Her father was three month governor, just like my dad. And they were supposed to get married. They were engaged already. So Bianca did not want to go out with Fayan Kaede anymore. So she had an abortion. I mean, I don't see these things. I might type it on social media. I'm saying it on camera now. She had an abortion, the second one. So when it came out that, oh, who knows you? I've never met you before. Oh, come on. <laughs> I had to talk. Femi did wow. not pay me a penny, a dime. I heard people saying he paid me to say those things. No, he didn't pay me. He didn't have to. You know what I mean? Mm. I mean, I swear to God on this camera, he didn't pay me a penny, a dime, nothing. I just spoke the truth. The others may not have wanted to speak at all, truth or not, because they were in If I was in a position, I was governor, I was senator or house of rep, I probably wouldn't be able to say anything yeah. because I would be waiting myself into a dirty scandal. Mm -hmm. And Bianca was an ambassador you know, to Spain. She lied, period. And all the Igbos attacked me on social media. They attacked me on social media, they were cursing me because she's their first <laughs> lady of Biafra and all this Ojuku wife. Speaking of Biafra, oh, um, yes. you've supported, you've expressed your support for the movement. Even I the dropped. International Business Times actually wrote uh, yeah, an article. your social media campaign. Yeah. And you are, you are for Biafra. You are for I was Biafra. for Biafra. I've left the movement. Okay, Jola. why were you for Biafra? I just saw a marginalized group of Nigerians. Jola, do you believe that some people are marginalized in Nigeria? I think we're all marginalized when we're Well, we all are. We all are we marginalized. All are. When I came here, I drove on slow highways with an average Nigerian youth selling on the highway, selling everything, chips, drinks, and all that. And these are youth. Every one of us is marginalized. Three million killed in a war. So why not? The only problem I had with Biafra was, why didn't you agitate during Jonathan's administration? Jonathan put a lot of Igbos in government. Why did you have to wait for Yorubas and Hausas? This is when my support, my support started fading, when they started using the slogan, Biafra or death. Biafra or death is not a slogan I can work with if I'm going to support. That was my activism side. On March 1st, I decided I'm no longer going to be doing, excuse me, activism in Nigeria. I, I proclaimed that on Facebook, no more activism as of March 1st, even gun violence. 
I want to be a social media personality only. No journalist, no pharmacist, just social media personality. Talking, doing interviews, whatever. Biafra just signifies force, okay? I now discover Yorubas and Hausas, they call us Yorubas. Yo and a rubber, like I'm the rubber. Oh, wow. That's how they're spelling it, yeah. Everything this Namdekano taught them, they were brainwashed with. With hate. No, with hate. hate speech. And the hate speech, I don't go for that. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna wade into ethnic, tribal, or hate speech. So I made a video, a live video, saying that why I'm exiting Biafra. And other newspapers and other social media platforms actually says, can you know your cut ties with Biafra group? I did cut ties. These are people I've never met, people I don't know, but I met them on social media. Social media is powerful. Mm. But they all went after me, cursed me out. They called me prostitute. Why would you call someone prostitute? The same people that are wishing me get well soon when I had this scar accident, the same people were calling me prostitute, deportee. <laughs> The deportation doesn't bother me. I told the first interview I had here, it's a badge of honor. I'm really proud. My political deportation is something I'm proud of, doing the right thing. I did interviews with, I even wrote an article in the Toronto Sun about the aftermath of my deportation. It's no problem for me. They called me all kinds of names. They called me bitch. They called me just horrible names. But it didn't matter to me. It really didn't matter to me. But I decided to separate myself from any movement advocating violence, especially now that the DSS is saying that there was there was a group of Biafrans trying to free Inamdi Kanu by having an invasion mm. when they come to court, invading the Black Maria. I don't want to be affiliated with violence, ethnic and tribal stuff. So I decided I'm not doing it. They've cursed me out and I just decided to put my page on hiatus for three months.